Let us open our Bible to the book of John 9, John 9. Believing in Yahshua and in human rules. Believing in Yahshua and in human rules. I mean, believing in Yahshua or in human rules. John 9 verses 1 to 7. Christ gives sight to one born blind. The earliest manuscripts of many other ancient witnesses do not have John 7 verse 53 to 8 verse 11. A few manuscripts include these verses wholly or in part uh, after John 7 36, John uh, 21 verse 25, Luke 21 verse 38, uh, Luke or Luke 24 verse 53. While it was not part of the earlier manuscripts of John, it is unlikely that it is totally fiction. It probably, it's probably an added snapshot of uh, Yahshua's ministry in certain later from oral tradition. So this applies to chapter 7 and 8. Verses 1 to 2. Some believed that any physical infirmity was a result of sin committed by that person or someone related to that person. That idea might have been based on a misunderstanding of passages like Exodus 34 verse 7 which says I quote he does not leave the guilty unpunished he punishes the children and their and their children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation end of quote verse 4 Yahshua's statement is a call to make the most of the time that Yahweh has given. There is an appointed amount of work that Yahweh has planned for Yahshua, and Yahshua must complete that work while he is here on earth, as we see in John 17 verse 4. Verse 5. Yahshua is the light of the world, the revelation of Yahweh on earth. He is showing the glory of Yahweh to everyone. Christ cured many who were blind of disease or accident. Here he cured one born, born blind. Thus he showed his power to help in the most desperate cases. And the work of his grace upon the souls of sinners which gives a sight to those blind by nature this poor man could not see Christ but Christ saw him and if we know or apprehend anything of Christ it is because we were first known of him Christ says of uncommon calamities that they are not always to be looked on as special punishments of sin. Sometimes they are for the glory of Yahweh and to manifest His works. Our life is our day in which it concerns us to do the work of the day. We must be busy and not waste the day time. It will be time to rest when our days, the, our day is gone, for it is better day. The approach of death should quicken us to improve all our opportunities of doing or getting good. What good we have an opportunity to do, we should do quickly. And he who will never do a good work, till there is nothing to be objected against will leave many a good work forever undone as it is said in Ecclesiastes 11 verse 4 Christ magnified his power in making a blind man to see 
doing what one one would think more likely to make a seeing man blind. Human reason cannot judge of the Lord's methods. He uses means and instruments that men despise. Those who want to be healed by Christ must be ruled by him. The man came back from the pool wondering and wondered at. He came seeing. This represents the benefits in attending on ordinances of Christ's appointment. Souls go weak and come away strengthened. They go doubting and come away satisfied. They go mourning and come away rejoicing. They go blind and come away seeing. John 9 verses 8 to 12. The account given by the blind man. Those whose eyes are open and whose hearts are cleansed by grace, being known to be the same person but widely, widely different in character, live as monuments to the Redeemer's glory and recommend His grace to all who desire the same precious salvation. It is good to observe the way and method of Yahshua of uh, the, 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 the it is good to observe the way and method of Yahweh's works and they will appear the more wonderful Apply this spiritually. In the work of grace broad upon the soul, we see the change, but we do not see the hand that makes it. The way of the Holy Spirit is like that of the wind, which you hear the sound of, but cannot tell where it comes from, nor where it goes. John 9 verses 13 to 17. The Pharisees questioned the man who had been blind. This is the first of three interrogations performed by the Pharisees in, in, in response to Yahshua's healing of a man, of the man. Their questions center around the process Yahshua used to perform the miracle. John reveals that this healing took place on a Sabbath. In the Pharisees' view, Yahshua had broken the prohibition against work on the Sabbath in three ways. First, he had healed a man. Second, he had made a clay park. And third, he had anointed the man. The Pharisees were concerned more about the rules than about Yahweh's glory. Christ not only worked miracles on the Sabbath, but in such a manner as would give offense to the Jews, for he would not seem to yield to the scribes and Pharisees. Their zeal for mere rights consumed the substantial matters of religion. Therefore, Christ would not give place to them. Also, works of necessity and mercy are allowed, and the Sabbath rest is to be kept in order that the Sabbath work, in order to the Sabbath to the Sabbath work. How many blind eyes? had been opened by the preaching of the gospel on the Lord's day. How many important, important souls cured on that day? Much unrighteous and uncharitable judging comes from men's adding their own fancies to Yahweh's appointments. How perfect in wisdom and holiness was our Redeemer when his enemies could find nothing against him but the oft-refuted charge of breaking the Sabbath. May we be enabled by well-doing to silence the ignorance of foolish people. 
John 9 verses 18 to 23 they asked concerning him the Jewish leaders interviewed the parents of the healed blind man hoping to discredit the miracle by proving the man had not been had not born blind terrified the parents only confirmed their son was indeed born blind and then differ they differ any other questions to him they feared being excommunicated that he is cut off from the synagogue if they were excommunicated they would not be able to work they would be kicked out of their homes forced to live as outsiders and not be welcomed into a haven when they died for so the Jews of the day believed the Pharisees vainly hoped to disprove this notable miracle they expected a Messiah but could not bear to think that this Yahshua should be should be he because his precepts were all contrary to their traditions and because they expected a Messiah in outward pomp and splendor the fear of man brings a snare as we see in Proverbs 29 verse 25 and often makes people deny and disown Christ and his truth and ways and acts, uh, act against their consciences the unlearned and poor who are simple hearted readily draw proper infer inferences from the evidences of the light of the gospel but those whose desires are another way forever learning never come to the knowledge of the truth John 9 verses 24 to 34 they cast the healed man out verses 24 to 25 the leaders summoned the healed man for a second round of questioning since they cannot deny that he was blind from birth the only thing left is to attack the character of Yahshua if Yahshua is a sinner then it does not matter what miracle he performs it is all evil the one thing this man will not relinquish though is that he was blind and now he sees verse 27 the man's question may be sarcastic sarcastic it was probably obvious that the religious leaders had no interest in becoming Yahshua's disciples verses 28 to 29 the idea of Moses and Yahweh conversing together conveys Yahweh's approval and blessing which the religious leaders claim for themselves verses 31 to 33 the healed man's reasoning is simple yet yet compelling first we know that Yahweh does not hear sinners to second Yahweh hears those who do his will third to heal some someone from from blind from birth must be a miracle of Yahweh fourth since it is a miracle from Yahweh the person who performed this miracle must have been obeying Yahweh because Yahweh heard him fifth therefore if Yahshua were not from Yahweh Yahweh wouldn't have empowered him to work this miracle hallelujah as Christ's mercies are most valued by those who have felt the one of them the want of them who have been blind and now see see the most powerful and lasting affections to Christ arise from actual knowledge of him in the work of grace in the soul so we cannot tell when and how 
and by what steps the blessed change w was made yet we may take the comfort if we can say through grief whereas I was blind now I see I did live a worldly sensual life but thanks be to God it is now otherwise with me as it is said in Ephesians 5 verse that's it. The unbelief of those who enjoy the means of knowledge and conviction is indeed marvelous. All who have felt the power and grace of the Lord Yahshua wonder at the willfulness of others who reject him. He argues strongly against them. Not only that Yahshua was not a sinner, but that he was of Yahweh. We may each of us know by this whether we, we are of Yahweh or not. What do we? What do we for Yahweh? What do we for our souls? What do we more than others? John 9 verses 35 to 38 Christ words to the man that had been blind. Verse 35. The word believe means to trust. Keep in mind that when the man asked who the Son of God between court is, he has never actually seen Yahshua. His eyes had been covered with clay and then he was taken to the water where he received his eyesight in verses 6 to 7. Christ owns those who own him and his truth and ways. There is particular notice taken of such a suffering in the cause of Christ and for the testimony of a good conscience. Our Lord Yahshua graciously reveals himself to the man now he was made sensible what an, 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 an unspeakable mercy it was to be cured if his blindness that in his blindness that, 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 that he might see the Son of God. Not, none but Yahweh is to be worshipped so that in worshiping Yahshua, he considered him to be God. All who believe in him will worship him. John 9 verses 39 to 41. Yahshua reproves the Pharisees. Christ came into the world to give sight to those who were spiritually blind. Also that those who see might be made blind. That those who have a high conceit of their own wisdom might be sealed up in, in ignorance. In ignorance, the preaching of the cross was thought to be folly by those who by carnal wisdom did not know Yahweh. Nothing fortifies people's corrupt hearts against the convictions of the word more than the high opinion which others have of them as if all who gain applause with them must obtain acceptance with Yahweh. Christ silenced them, but the sin of the self-conceited and self-confident remain. They reject the gospel of grace, therefore the guilt of their sin remains unpardoned, and the power of their sin remains unbroken. Know this, and the Lord Yahweh will bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Let us pray. John 9. Asking who sinned the man and his parents that he was born blind is assuming all suffering is Yahweh's punishment in the name of Yeshua. Neither the man nor his parents sinned. But this happened 
so that the works of Yahweh might be displayed in him in the name of Yeshua. As long as it is day, we must do the works of Yahweh who sent us in the name of Yeshua. For night is coming when no one can work in the name of Yeshua. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world, and I must show the light to the world in the name of Yeshua. The man they call Yeshua made some mud and put it in the eyes of the born blind. He told him to go to the Siloam, Siloam and wash. So he went and washed and then he could see in the name of Yeshua. A sinner, a sinner cannot, cannot perform such signs. Only prophets can in the name of Yeshua. They healed the man gave glory to Yahweh by telling the truth in the name of Yeshua. He didn't know whether Yahshua was a sinner or not. But one thing he did know is he was blind, but now he could see in the name of Yeshua. We know that Yahweh does not listen to sinners. He listens to the God godly persons who, who does his will in the name of Yeshua. Nobody has ever heard of opening the eyes of a man born blind in the name of Yeshua. So if Yahshua were not uh, from Yahweh, he could he could do nothing in the name of Yeshua. I believe in the Son of Man because I have seen him. In fact, he is the one speaking with me in the name of Yeshua. I believe in the Son of Man because I have seen him. In fact, he is the one speaking with me in the name of Yeshua. I believe in the Son of Man because I have seen him. In fact, he is the one speaking with me. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua, the Messiah, we pray. For judgment, Yeshua has come into the world so that the blind will see, will see and those who see will become blind. In the name of Yeshua. If people were blind, they would not be guilty of sin. In the name of Yeshua. But now that they claim that they can see, their guilt remains. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua, the Messiah, we pray. Thank you, Father Yahweh, that you heard our prayers. Thank you, Lord, for your, that you heard our, 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 for your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for your, for your mercy, for your grace. Thank you, Father, for your word of wisdom, your word of guidance, your word of teaching, your word of enlightening, your word of spiritual strengthening, spiritual growth, spiritual elevation. Thank you, Father Yahweh, that you heard our, 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 that you heard our prayers. Thank you, Lord, that you heard our confession, our prayers of repentance, and after you heard, you took away our dirty garment of sin and iniquity, then you dressed us with a brand new garment, a garment cleaner than anything else, even the garment of your own spirit. Thank you, Father Yahweh, that you heard our cries, our supplication, our requests, our prayers. Thank you, Lord, for your answers to our prayers. Father, we give you glory, we give you honor, we give you all the praise. In the mighty name of Yeshua, the 